how did Manchester United even lose this match? I don't want to have to be sad. But at the rate we are going, I don't think he survives even this season. This match was for me a very entertaining match for the Prince. But for a Manchester United match, it was nothing more than heartbreak. It was it was pretty even for the majority of the match. But we should have won. We should have won this game. But this team showed its sporting and writing once again. We have now lost five points in the last few minutes of the game, in the previous two games. Against Brentford, we again considered in the last minute. Now against Chelsea, we considered two goals in the last two minutes. This team just needed to hold out for three minutes. Yet they considered two goals. I don't blame Tenak for this loss. I don't think he did a lot of things wrong. But you just have to question why is he setting up the teams like this? Manchester United is now the team was considered the most shots in Europe's top five leagues. That's embarrassing. We have considered more shots than Sheffield United. I know we have a lot of injuries. We have, we have had like 60 plus injuries this season alone, which is ridiculous. But we have seen it all season that we have injuries. And at some point, Tenad has to change his tactics. Whatever his tactics are, then he, they are not working. We are conceding way too many shots. I mean, you give those many shots, we are always going to concede. And that's what happens. This majority team. Whenever we score a goal, we always can see that's a rule now. So as soon as we were winning 3-2, I think all of us knew deep down that we were going to concede. And we conceded in the worst way possible. United has already lost 17 games this season. And that's the most losses that it has had since the 1990 season. Not only that, they already lost 12 games, which is the most we have ever lost in the Premier League season. And that's only day now, day April. We still have games against Liverpool, against Arsenal, Newcastle, Brighton, not to mention the FA Cup games. So we are definitely going to play it after board. And with those, that many losses, I don't think they're not summarized. And if you look at this match, it, it was just so ridiculous. All of the goals you can see did were just such poor quality. The first goal we considered from the back once again. Onana should have saved it, but he jumped over it, like how he was doing earlier in the season. The second goal we considered, Anthony giving away a soft penalty. That shouldn't have been a penalty, right? But, of course, it's against United, so they gave it away. A very soft penalty. The third goal, I don't know what Dallow was thinking. What was he doing? Dallow has been our most consistent player this season, and yet he made the most sinning mistake. Why was he chasing Madueke when he was already in front of him? I don't think Madueke could have done anything in that position anyways. But he dripped, gave away a very soft penalty and this world. It's been a trend this season that whenever it's a foul against United, the opponent team always gets it, right? Whether it's a soft penalty, whether it's a bullshit free kick, the referees always give it against United. But if this happens for a red player, we never see it. I don't know how many times we should have gotten a penalty, but we don't get it. But somehow, Chelsea got two very, very soft red penalties. And the last goal. Like, how are you affording Palmer this much space? We are the, one of the worst teams that set pieces in probably the Euro. We can't score set pieces, yet we can see it from a ton of set pieces. I'm so glad Eric Ramsey is leaving the club. Because he's one of the worst set piece coaches I've ever seen. We actually scored some pretty decent goals this game. The Nacho with a very, very good finish from the first pass of mistake, right? Under pressure. Then Bruno scoring a really good header from the Dallo Cross. And the third, the crazy Trivella pass from Anthony and the Ganacho finish. We should have won that game. The Nacho is now the teenager who has the most goal involvements. And that's something to be proud of. But that moment has been stolen away from him because the team brought him there. The only thing I can criticize about Tenag in this game is that why did he sub on Rashford? I understand Colin needs to be subbed off, right? Because he's injury prone and stuff. And he has to play a lot more games. But bringing on Rashford, I don't know what's going on with it. Honestly. It just feels like he doesn't love his football anymore. 
he was jogging around, not even pressing properly, like not even putting in the good tackle. Mount came on for like seven minutes, and he probably did a hundred times more than Rashford in thirty minutes. What he did, Rashford just isn't putting in enough effort, despite being a academy graduate, despite being the face of Manchester United. He just doesn't feel involved in the team as much as I would like him to be. That Rashford's such a decision probably sapped away a lot of their energy. We had to hold on for three minutes. In three minutes, we went from three two to four three. Bottlers, like it's just so annoying and frustrating to see. Like sure, you consider consider really bad penalty, right? It's fine. Mistakes happen. Three all. I think it's that three all whole the whole the game. How did we lose in the last minute? Like just a board off for one minute, and they couldn't even do that. Magic strategy just feels like a sushi experiment. Just to see how much pain a fan can take. That's what it feels like for the past decade. It's been a joke, especially this season. This season is just ridiculous. We have had 60 plus injuries. We have played without a left back for majority of this season. We have had only one striker because I don't even know where Martial is anymore. We only have one seed in because if Casemiro gets injured, Amunabak isn't getting in game time. And if that wasn't even enough, in the last two games, we have had four center back injuries. Last game, when Lindruff and Martinez got injured. This game, Varan and Evans got injured. Like, what is even going on in this season? Like, I've never seen something like this before. And one of the things which is not helping Tanak is his post-match comments, right? Because if you look at this comment right here, where he's saying that we have good defending. I don't know what he's talking about. Like, right? we are conceding. The most shots in all of Europe. And the only reason we are not lower is either because the teams aren't good at finishing or we are barely slipping by. It's just so weird to think that how did we go from having Golden Day of last season to having the most shots conceded in all of Europe this season? Like, how is there such a big one into degree change? It is probably injuries, right? The, reason for it because he had Baran and Martinez for most of the season last year but why is this such a big drop off that is down with the next tactics and his refusal to change it we have worse players now but he has to adapt to it but he's not he is just going with the players he's, he trusts he's not going by his tactics and that is one of the reasons he's going to get sad I don't want him to be sacked because I think all of the replacements being considered, they're all worse than him. None of the replacements being considered have done more than what he did at Ajax. The only two managers which I think are worth considering is Hansi Fleck or Julian Nagelsmann. But I don't think Ineos is going to go for either of them. From the reports, the most recent reports is that Ineos is looking to hire Southgate. That will be one of the most stupidest decisions I ever see if they hired Saki. I will lose all trust in the Inos project if they keep, if they hire uh, Saki or order for that fact. The solution to Manchester United is really simple. Sell off 95% of the players. Because I don't think changing managers will do anything unless the players are gone. These players are not, not technically. These players cannot play fast-paced football or position football. Sell the players, then think about changing the managers. Because I don't think Tenag is worse than any of the candidates, majority of them being considered. But whether Ineos does it, I don't think so. Because from what we are seeing, Sir Jim Ratcliffe is pro-British. That means he won't sell McTominay, he won't sell Rashford, that probably also means he won't sell Maguire. He might hire Porter or Southgate. If that happens, I will use all hope in Manchester yeah, going forward. Probably for the next 10 years. I know I've been rambling or like just yapping in this video, right? But it's because I'm so frustrated. It's like game after game, the inconsistency is unbearable. We can play go good football and just lose the next minute. Right? We just don't know what's going on in this team. Whether it's lack of identity, lack of confidence. Due to injury, due to tactics, it's just everything is going wrong. What can go wrong is going wrong with Manchester United. 
next game is Liverpool. And unlike the FA Cup game, I don't think we have a chance of this game. Liverpool in a tight race in the Premier League is a all together bit different beast. They are way more focused, they are way more threatening. And with this whole last drop season thing, I think that Bonobo will be more harder in this game. Especially after losing to us in the FA Cup. The only hope we have is that for some reason, Liverpool bottled it again. And that's the only way we can win on Sunday. Somehow they miss all their chances and somehow we get one or two chances and we score it. Right? And not only that, the Liverpool game that we have Arsenal, we have Brighton, Newcastle, Coventry and then probably City in the FA Cup final. We have a lot of difficult games. And we have already tied the achievement of losing the most games in the Premier League season and 17 losses overall. That is only going to get a grease. That will put more pressure on Ten Hag. I really, really think Ten Hag is the right manager. Because it's like he made us finish third last season. We won a cup. We won the Golden Glove. So it's not like he has forgotten how to manage a club suddenly in this season. He knows how to manage. He, he just doesn't have the players for it. And that's what he has been saying throughout his whole time at United. That he cannot play the IX style at United because he doesn't have those players here. So if Ten Hag gets all of his players fully fit for a run of games like last season, I think he can give us the results we want. But whether he gets the time for it or not, I don't think so. If Ten Hag wants to keep his job, he has to change his tactics for the last few games this season. If you have somehow made it through this video till now, I would really like to know what you think about Ten Hag. Whether you are Ten Hag in, whether you are Ten Hag out. If you are Ten Hag out, who do you want to see as a manager next? Right? Considering the fact that Southgate can't join us right now because of England, Nagelsmann can't join us right now because of Germany. So who do you want as a next manager? If you're 10 Hag out. I've been running a poll on my Twitter page and this is the result so far. Which just shows that the public is split on it. Like it's really close whether they're 10 Hag in or 10 Hag out. I still think that we should have won the game against Brentford after Mons. We should have won this game against Chelsea. We bottled it in the last few minutes and that's not on the manager. That's on the players. They don't have the concentration. They don't have the mentality to win in the closing stages and that's when I get 10 out sad. If you've watched the video so far then I would really appreciate if you can click on the like and subscribe button below. I would really love to have you in my community. And you can click on this video right here which shows why we lost against the Brentford and my match reaction to it. I will see you all again after the Inakui game and I hope we have a better result at that time. I will even take a draw against Liverpool to be fair. Thank you for watching my video and listening to my rambling. See you next time. Goodbye.